What's going on everyone? It's King Touch Pro and welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Guys, I have something really special for you guys and that's going to be this kind of panning transition effect and I think you guys will absolutely love this effect. Not only that though, I'm also showing you guys another awesome pack from Cinepax, of course. You guys really loved the last video so I wanted to show you another effect from Cinepax, the Cinepax store. And uh, that's going to be this one right here, which is like a schematics kind of scanning or a vintage scan effect. It's super, super cool. And I'll show you how to apply that along with this effect that I'm going to show you. No plugins are required whatsoever. And now this blueprint effect comes from the Cinepax store. And uh, I'll have that link down in the description if you guys want to try that out. They also have a free version and a paid version. All right. So before I do begin with the actual tutorial, I want to mention Cinepax for, well, sponsoring today's video. So a big special thanks to Tyler and his store from Cinepax. Now this is going to be the vintage scan effects pack and it's super super cool because these are all handmade animated vintage scans. So they actually scan these uh, by hand so you guys get the highest quality that there is pretty much for your videos of course. And you can create some really cool effects. So you have some glitch scan effects and, and stuff like that. You have over 150 overlays. So these are just assets that you overlay onto your video. You just drag and drop. So this is going to be the paid pack and if you guys go into the free packs over onto the left you guys will see a bunch of packs that you guys can uh, try out on your videos before you actually buy again if we scroll down you will be able to find the vintage scan effects which is going to be around here somewhere so it's at the very bottom free vintage scan effects if you click on this it will show you what you get for of course zero dollars if you want to try out the sample pack of course you don't get the full version but it's still cool. Uh, you get three free overlay effects. A uh, link will be down in the description for the paid pack and the free version. Okay, and this is what I created here. If I push play, it looks amazing in my opinion. And I know you guys wanted this effect from a previous video that I made. And you guys were really curious on how I created it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So um, what you want to do first is I'm going to start from scratch here and import my video, not mine, but um, the 504 and trust video link will be in the description. And this is the whole raw video here. And I want to select a portion of the clip, assuming that you're actually editing a music video um, it wouldn't be completely finished of course you would add the music at the end so that everything flows nicely but let's pretend that we're at that point in and that stage what we're going to do is we're going to move the playhead around this point right here i'm going to press command b to split that clip we're going to move the playhead towards the end around here and press command b so now we have a single clip and we can delete the rest that we want. I'm just going to cut it around maybe here, delete the end. And then for this one, I'm going to have it like that. So we're just really working with this one here. This is going to be more of like a, just to show you what it will look like if it transitions there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a copy. So I'm going to rename this clip to original, just so you guys don't get confused. I'm going to hold option and drag upwards. And we're going to name this again. We're going to change it to copy. Um, and then from this point, all you got to do is go into the effects. We're going to go into masks, go to draw mask and drag that onto your video. Now, once you're at this point, all you got to do is make a selection of your subject. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a very rough selection with this one, just because I don't want to take too much of your guys' time. Um, but if you guys are actually doing this, I would suggest you guys um, actually get very, have some time set aside so you can do this and make it look really cool. So I'm gonna go here and just finish it off like that. Very simple selection, but you guys get the idea. Of course, you would want to add more points. Um, but anyways, once you're at this point, what you wanna do is go in next to the draw mask in the inspector window, go to the control points, add a keyframe there and open up the transform right here. And we're gonna add a keyframe next to position as well as in rotation. So we're gonna have three keyframes as well as scale. Why not in case you decide to, to increase the scale. So once you're at this point, all you gotta do is either go frame by frame and adjust this according to how much your subject is moving. What I like to do is I like to go um, every two frames and then adjust it. You can either click and drag each point or you can click in between two points and drag that line like that or you can click in between anywhere, right? Anywhere in, inside of the mask and drag the whole entire point. What I like to do is I like to, depending if the subject is not moving a lot, maybe around here, I might just want to move it a little bit or shift it a little bit to the right, depending on your subject, of course. And right there is fine. I might want to move this piece up here and just go frame by frame, maybe every other two frames, depending 
what the frame rate of your video is and how much movement there is. Now, if there's less movement, the easier it's going to be to keyframe this. All right, guys, so at this point, his body's not shifting that much. So all I'm really doing is clicking and dragging and shifting the actual whole entire mask to the right a little bit. So I'm just going frame by frame. And of course, you're going to have way more points than I do. This is just to show you how to actually create the effect. All right, guys, so I think I finished the selection here of the keyframing. And of course, this is not the best <laughs> selection that I could have done. But this is just to show you guys, of course, how to create the effect. Now, right now there's no feathering, so it looks very harsh on the edges. So what I want to do is I want to go into the draw mask, go into the feather, and instead of dragging the feather to the right, which will increase the featherness outwards. We're going to do the opposite and create the feather towards the inside. So you won't really be able to tell because if we enable the background footage, you can't tell that there's an actual feather going on, of course, because it's the same exact video. But if we disable it for now, you can see that it has a nice soft edge and that's what we want to do. Now, once we're at this point, all we have to do now, and this is where it gets a little bit complicated, but I try to simplify it as much as I can. We're going to make another copy of this one. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hold option and drag upwards again. And we're going to rename this one to something else like uh, original two. So we're going to type original two. Once you're at this point, what you want to do is we have the, um, so if I disable this one, we have the original video clip, we have the second copied original clip, and then we have the actual panning clip at the very top, as you can see, with the mask applied. What I want to do is I'm going to disable the top clip just for now so you guys don't get confused. We're going to select the original clip, the copied clip, and we're going to go into, I might want to zoom out a little bit to maybe 50%. We're going to click on the transform button here and if you're on the latest version of Final Cut Pro 10, but anyways, what you want to do is have this button checked. Now if you don't have that, it's totally fine. You don't have to have that button, but this just shows you the transparency grid showing you if you move it outside of the frame where this is located. If you don't have this on the latest version of Final Cut, it's just going to look like this and that's totally fine, but if you do have it, enable it by clicking this button. What I want to do now is I want to go to the very beginning of the uh, clip here by moving the playhead at the beginning. We're going to select the original clip, number two, right, the copied clip. We're going to go into transform, go to position, and we're going to drag the X axis to the right. Now, I don't want to enable the actual transform button in this uh, setting here. I'm going to click done. I just want to move it. So we're going to click and drag this to the right. And if your video was filmed in 1920 by 1080, just full HD, it's very easy. Just type in 1920. And if we go back to transform, you're going to see that it's aligned perfectly to the right. And you can do this on the left too, if you want. And you can also do it on the top or in the bottom if you want it to come up or down. Doesn't matter. I'm just doing it this way. If you filmed in or if your video is in uh, 720p, all you got to do is type in 1280 here in the X axis and you click done. Okay. Um, just make sure you don't have this enabled like this. You want to make sure you're just doing it in here with no keyframes. Cool. So once you're there, we're going to select the original copied clip. So original two and the original video. We're going to go into back to the transform button here. And now you're going to see that we can move both of these, um, but we're not going to move it on the actual screen itself. We're going to have to do it again in transform. And uh, cool. So once we're here, um, we're actually going to create a keyframe. So we're going to add a keyframe there. And this is going to add it to both of the clips because they're both selected. We're going to, I don't know, run it for a couple of seconds. If I push play, I might want to run it around a second, 15, 14, something like that. Uh, we'll do 15 for, for that for now. Uh, and then we're going to go to the X axis and just drag it to the left, all the way to the left. Try to get it as close as you can to 1920 or 1280 if you filmed in uh, 720 and we're going to go right there. Perfect. That's all you got to do. So now if you move the playhead to the beginning, it's going to animate it. So it's going to push by push play. It's going to look like this super smooth. It's just two keyframes. It's that simple. Now that you have that done, click off of it and the both of the clips should still be selected. Right click on that and go to new compounds clip to group them together and we're going to name this uh, we're going to name this uh, panning. Now that we have that, we're going to create a blur. So if we drag this, you're going to see that there's a line in between that. And I'm showing you guys this with no plugins, of course. We're going to go into the effects, go into blur, go to uh, directional blur, and drag that onto the panning clip, the grouped clip. 
And now what we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the plate to the beginning. We're gonna go into directional. We're gonna type in 220 at the beginning. You can do like something really dramatic like that if you want. I think 20 is fine. Uh, and add a keyframe. You can also change the angle if you drag it like that. I don't think that looks good, but do do it like that. Um, again, if you're gonna do it from the bottom, just move it to the bottom like that, or other direction if you prefer that way. Uh, we're gonna do it clockwise though for for this video, and we're gonna go in into the timeline, and we're gonna again go to right where it stops, which is about go here, right there. So you might have to go frame by frame using the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard, but don't actually have it stop right there. Go about two frames to the right a little bit, and then go to amount and type in zero. The reason we added two more frames is so that this here stays blurred, uh, you know, at least two more frames longer, so that we don't really see it that harsh of an edge, if that makes sense. So now if I push play, it's gonna look like this, super clean, super smooth. And now once we enable the actual masked subject, it's gonna look like this. Again, this is why we have the feather so that it's nice and soft. This is just a rough selection, but that's just the idea, of course. So it looks like this, it looks awesome. Now that we have that though, we wanna make it a little bit more interesting. Now this is where the Cinepax effects comes in. So what we're gonna do is gonna go into the project properties, and here I imported all of the scans and the whole pack pretty much, the paid version into Final Cut Pro 10. So what you do, you literally click and drag on top of your media or in between, doesn't matter. Nothing's gonna happen because you're gonna have to change the blend mode. So go into the inspector window, go into blend mode and go into the either lighten or screen. I think lighten looks pretty good. And now if I push play, it looks like this, super neat. As you can see, it looks just like that. Now, of course, we can click and drag this below the mask. And now you have a new effect like this and it looks so cool. All right, so this is the free one with the text scan. So it looks like this, super cool. Uh, now if we go into the blend mode and change this to screen, this also works on other editing apps. Uh, just go in and find the blend mode. And now if I push play, it looks like this, super neat. I'm gonna click and drag this below the actual mask and it looks like this, super sick. Now I'm gonna move this towards where it ends and this is where I want it to start. So it's gonna end here. Well, it's gonna end about here and I want this to come in. Now, it's a bit harsh when it comes in, so we're gonna create a very easy transition. So go to the transitions, go to dissolves, and just add a dissolve effect here. And we're gonna trim the beginning and the end as well as this point here, and do something like this, push play, and it looks something like that. Super, super sick. But these are all of the really cool effects that you have. We have hazardous, so if we drag this above your media, push play, you have this here, and I want to change the blend mode to the screen, maybe lighten actually, and push play, and it looks just like that. Isn't that so cool? So once that is done, I mean, you could of course, again, you have different stuff here. We have like bombs, we have military uh, weapons, stuff like that. And here we have more of the video stuff here with the CRT scan is what they call it. So this creates more of that glitchy effect. If you like that, just add it into your video. Um, and you can do that as well and change the blend mode to like lighten your screen. And you can do something like that. And then let's say you want to just have it for a couple of seconds. Looks like that. And you're literally done. That's all you gotta do for that effect. Um, now you can color grade this if you want. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but if you guys want to do that, then feel free. Um, but again, a uh, big special thanks to Seda Packs for sponsoring this video. I know I only show you guys packs that are absolutely worth it for the money. And if you guys find this video helpful, please leave a like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on a video. Peace out.